Artificial Neural Networks Scholastic Video Book Series Part 2 Multilayer Perceptrons In this lesson, we are going to look at classification using multilayer perceptron model. Limitations of perceptrons If there is a solution to be found, then the single layer perceptron learning algorithm will find it. Please see the video given here in this link where we showed a problem with a linear separator the two classes C1 and C2 are clearly separable using a linear separator it can separate classes that lie either side of a straight line easily that is using single layer perceptron model but in reality division between classes are much more complex take for example the classical exclusive O problem exclusive O logic function has two inputs and one output two inputs x1 x2 and output is z 0 0 input output is 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 so if we were to draw a space for this one input space and the output we get something like this so these are the inputs 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 x1 and x2 are the two vectors so basically you can see that when it is 0 0 output is 0 1 1 output is 0 1 0 1 output is 1 1 0 output is 1 so if we want to separate this one the classification boundary should be something like this and something like that that is the class 1 is in green color class 2 is in red color so you can't find a linear separation boundary to classify this into two classes so therefore we are going to use a thing called multi-layer perceptron model so we will consider this as a problem in which we want the perceptron to learn to solve output 1 if x1 is on and x2 is off or is x2 is on and x2 1 is off otherwise output a 1 output a 0 so this appears a simple problem but there is no linear solution and this problem is linearly inseparable hence single layer perceptrons cannot solve this problem so we come to the theory of multilayer perceptrons here Multilayer perceptrons have been applied to solve some difficult problems. This consists of input layer, one or more hidden layer, and an output layer. Input layer, hidden layer, and an output layer. The training of the network is done by the highly popular algorithm known as the error backpropagation algorithm. This algorithm is based on the error correcting learning rule. Basically, there are two passes through the different layers of the network forward pass and the backward pass. So, let us look at the problem with two layers. Exo problem with two layers. These are the two layers hidden layer, input layer, and an output layer. Basically, uh, input layer is normally taken as the input so you normally consider as two layer uh, system hidden and output layer input layers obviously should be there so these are the two layers hidden and output layer now consider the following network with one hidden layer and one output layer one hidden layer and output layer this four it's two layer network and each input is connected to the first neuron input two first neuron and the second neuron input 2 also first neuron and the second neuron in the hidden layer and come to the second output layer so you have neuron 1 connect neuron 3 neuron 2 output is connected to neuron 3 and then you get the output and these are the weight w11 w12 w21 w22 and there are two bias b1 b2 and there's another bias for this layer b3 each neuron has its own bias. Okay, now the problem is given here. Verify 
that the network shown in the previous slide solves an XO problem for the following two sets of parameters. Assume that the activation function phi v in the neurons are threshold functions where phi v is equal to 1 if v was greater than or equal to 0 equal to 0 if v is less than 0. So there are weights given and bias given and we are asked to show that it is correct. There are two sets of weights and bias and each of the cases we need to show that these weights and bias are correct but sometimes you may not be getting the weights or bias we have to find out the using training but in this particular lesson we are given the bias and the weight so we are going to show that these are correct so first step uh, this is the a neurons model given hidden layer and outer layer and these are function given so these are the given things this is the output vector for input x1 x2 output is z so these are the given parameters now what we try to do is to sh uh, show that it is correct for this input input is 0 1 that means x1 equal to 0 x2 equal to 1 and this is the weight vector please note that this is for hidden layer that is for this part of the network wh hidden layer is wh here so we have whn is equal to minus 1.5 because bias p1 x minus 1.5 and x1 and x2 sorry w11 and w12 w11 and w12 w21 and w22 w21 and w22 with the bias coming minus 1.5 ok let's look at the problem here what is given is the two layer network with the bias and weight these are the weights these are the bias values and also the activation function which is 5v is equal to 1 if v is greater than or equal to 0 0 if v is less than 0 and let's see for a given input 0 1 so if it is 0 1 output should be 1 so we need to verify that if 0 1 is the input this neural network should give a output 1 how do you do it? First we will take the weight matrix for the hidden layer W hidden N. First one is the bias minus 1.5 and weight vector coming from this one W11 and W12 to this neuron. Zero W11 and W12 and W21 and W22 one so you get this value here and the bias minus 1.5 and bias 2 is minus 0.5 bias 2 is minus 0.5 and input vector xn again the bias is 1 in this case and x1 and x2 input vector is basically we have to add a bias value it is actually 1 here the bias is 1 and x1 x2 and then we multiply the weight vector transpose of the weight vector multiplied by the input vector transpose of the weight vector multiplied by the input vector and inside the function basically this is going through a neural network with a function of 5v so basically this is how we write it so when this these two values that is the weight times the input goes through this function you get y as the output so this y hn are the two outputs from these two hidden neurons h is to indicate it's a hidden 
So basically what you do is transpose of the first weight matrix multiply by the input vector 101 and when you transpose you get this one here and multiply by the input vector and simplify this is multiplication of two vectors basically two matrices this one this row multiplied by this column this row multiplied by this column give 0.5 this row multiplied by this column will give negative 0.5 so if the function is negative 0.5, the output is actually when v is less than 0, output should be 0. Output is 0. When v is greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0, output should be 1. So 5.5 is equal to 1. 5 minus 0.5 is equal to 0. These are the two outputs y1h and y2h from these hidden layers. Now we have to input those two outputs from these layers into this this neuron, neuron number three. Again the same procedure. Weight vector transpose times the input vector xn will give you output y0n. This is the output. Earlier it was a hidden. So the th second time we do the, the same procedure here and our vector is bias B3 W31 W32. W31 W32 times the vector input times bias. Bias is 1, in this case 1, W Y1H Y2H. Uh, please note that bias is 1, it's not uh, yeah, the value in this case 1 here. 1 Y1H Y2H. So when you transpose this one and multiply this one, you get a single value because this this row times this column will give a number 0.5. It is 5.5 greater than 0.5 is greater than 0. Therefore, output of 5.5 should be equal to 1. So that's exactly what we got. Basically, we input 0, 1 and from our neural network it shows that we get 1 as the output that is exactly what we need similarly we can use to verify the solution using another input input 0 0 and go through this weight vector input 0 0 we can send it through this weight vector again the same procedure all the weights are one equal here and the two bias and input vector will become one zero zero we have one zero zero as the input layer and goes through the multiplication process that is the weight vector transpose time the input vector one zero zero and you get this one back here and multiply uh, when you transpose this you get this one times one zero zero and you get five of negative one point five and negative value will give zero v is negative one point five that is zero uh, five v and five negative one negative point five also zero so it's y one h and y two h both are zero and now these two inputs will go into the third neuron same procedure B3, W31, W32 so we have that and then the input is 1 W31, W3 1 Y1, H, Y2, H 1 Y1, H, Y2, H so you multiply by the vector B3 is given in the example B3 is negative 0.5 W31 also given W32 is also given and when you go through the third neuron the output will be so in input to the third neuron is 5 negative 0.5 again you look at the equation here if v is negative that means 5 v is 0 when v is negative 5 v equal to 0 so that exactly what we are expecting here when input is 0 0 output should be 0 so we verify that for the case of 0 0 same thing can be done for the case of 1 0 we can input 1 0 and you can get 1 so you need to swallow the same procedure 
only difference is that xn input vector is 1 1 0 and simplify you got 5 0 0.5 that is positive that means output is 1 the last case is 1 1 when you substitute 1 1 again it go to this uh, only thing that changes here is 1 1 1 this input vector will change according to the input here and then we can show that 5 negative 1.5 here which is equal to 0 because when v is negative 5 sh v should be 0 so we have verified it for the force inputs given for uh, uh, weights and bias are already given and then the system is giving the correct output for the four different inputs okay second for the question weights are given and bias are given basically the weight values are different here from the previous case and the function the same neuron model and the same function here what we do here is we input 0 1 and we have the weight back matrix here 1.5 b1 b2 is 0.5 and the weight values are here multiply it we have to multiply the transpose of this by the input vector 1 0 1 input is 0 1 x1 x2 0 1 this is the bias 1 so when you multiply the transpose of the weight matrix with the input vector we get 1 0 s y1 h and y2 h so you again substitute that in the neuron 3 model we are b3 w3 1 and w3 2 times the bias y1 h y2 h and when you simplify this one you get 5.5 .5. so if it is 0 0.5 basically b is greater than 0 that means the output should be 1 for 0 1 output is 1 similarly for 0 0 we can proceed with the same argument and we end up with 0 because what we get here is 5 negative 0.5 which is 0 that is for 0 0 input and if the input was 1 0 1 0 input output should be 1 so we can show that output is 5.5 that means 0.5 is greater than 1 greater than 0 therefore this output of this function should be equal to 1 the last input is 1 1 when you input 1 1 it again goes through the, the weight vector multiplied by the input vector so for 1 1 we can see the output is 0 because when you multiply inside the function you get a negative 0.5 that is v is negative 0.5 means it's less than 0 it is equal to 0 okay that concludes the four inputs like when you have those four inputs the desired outputs we call the desired output 0 1 1 and 0 that concludes the verification of the model and the bias values basically these bias values are obtained using training but in this particular question those values are given and we are asked to show that the, the weight vectors and bias are correct at the end of the neural network part 2 classification using multi-layer perceptrons we will explain few more questions in the next few videos